Conversations with the Candidates, brought to you in part by the ACUA, keeping recycling easy and convenient in Atlantic County, and by Sure Crucial Care Atlantic City. The doctor will see you now for your urgent medical needs. NBC 40 presents Conversations with the Candidates. Hello once again and welcome to Conversations with the Candidates. I'm Jeff Whitaker. Between now and the November general election, we will talk with the men and the women running for the office of governor, U.S. Senate, along with state Senate and assembly candidates from South Jersey. We'll spend 30 minutes with each of the candidates, learn their background, why they are seeking the office, and most importantly, why electing them is the choice that you should make. We're also giving you, our viewers, an opportunity to submit your questions to the candidates as well. And I'll tell you a little bit later on how you can participate in that. This half hour, we welcome Republican U.S. Senate candidate Steve Lonigan. Mr. Lonigan was the mayor of Bogota, New Jersey from 1996 to 2008 and a candidate for the Republican nomination for governor of New Jersey in 2005 and 2009. He is currently the state director of the New Jersey chapter of Americans for Prosperity. Steve and his wife Lorraine have two adult daughters. Mayor, thanks for joining us today. Jeff, it's great to be here. One thing though, I did resign my position as State Director of Americans for Prosperity to devote myself to this race 100 percent. Let's talk a little bit about why, so why did you make that decision and why do you want now to, to, to run for U.S. Senate? Well, you know, Jeff, sometimes you find yourself at a point in life where you come to a crossroads where you have to make a major decision, where you have an opportunity to be part of historic change. Um, I spent 12 years as a mayor. I understand local government very, very well. I've won three elections and kept Republican control of the Democrat town of Bogota for 12 years. And then I served for seven years as the state director of Americans for Prosperity, leading the state on many key issues, fundamental policy issues on economics and government policy that impact taxpayers. So I've had the remarkable opportunity to learn, deeply learn about federal policy issues and how they impact our lives and to advocate for them or against them. So this has prepared me, I think, better than anybody in the state to be a U.S. Senate candidate, but most of all, to articulate a message that's best for New Jerseyans. There are a lot of issues, obviously, at stake, not only for New Jersey, but for the, uh, the U.S. government as well as a U.S. senator representing uh, not only the state of New Jersey, but also uh, weighing in on, on matters of national uh, importance and, and world importance as well. Where do you see the main emphasis, I, I know there's a lot of things that you feel when it comes to, to, uh, to our tax system and, and issues that, that, uh, that surround that, but where do you feel is, is the main emphasis of what you want to accomplish should you be elected to go to Washington? Every issue that's confronting America today boils down to one simple thing, our individual liberty and what's happening to our individual liberty, to our freedom, to our ability as Americans to stand on our own two feet, to keep the fruit of our labor, to build a better future for our families. That's liberty, that's what's at stake. And as I've said at many speeches, the number one thing I will be looking at and weighing in every decision I'll make as a U.S. Senator is how is it impacting each individual's liberty. That's the core of the Declaration of Independence and our constitutional rights, and we're losing those rights under the Obama administration. As a Republican from the state of New Jersey, obviously you're already in an uphill battle for the U.S. Senate race. How do you propose to go, should you be uh, nominated as a Republican candidate, how do you propose to, uh, to run against your Democratic opponent? I will be the conservative candidate in this race, unabashedly and unapologetic. I'm going to stand up for our conservative principles. Those are the principles on which America was built, uh, the principles of our Constitution. And any one of my four opponents, whether it's Mayor Booker, Congressman Pallone, Congressman Halter, Assembly Speaker Sheila Oliver, are all going to be rubber stamps for the Obama administration for apologists for the IRS assault on Tea Party and conservative groups, apologists for the NSA intervening in our private lives with their surveillance for the Obama health care plan, for the Dodd-Frank bill, for cap and trade, and for all those issues that are undermining our prosperity. There's a very clear difference between me and those four potential candidates, but they're all the same. Uh, Jeff, I don't see this as much as an, it's, it's a big challenge. There's no doubt it's a high profile race. It's the biggest race in the country. However, it's not as uphill a battle as you may think. 
I believe that our conservative base is motivated. They want to go to work. They realize what's happening to our country. I also, if you saw a recent poll that came out just yesterday, the Quinnipiac poll, has me beating Sheila Oliver in a statistical dead heat with Paul Col uh, Holt and Pallone, and, and right now losing to Cory Booker. That's until we expose his real record. So uh, this is going to be a horse race, Jeff. You mentioned the Tea Party. Has the Tea Party gotten a bad rap? Because there are a lot of candidates now who associated with themselves with the Tea Party a couple of years ago who have now have started to pull themselves away. Well, uh, uh, the Tea Party movement was a reaction to the Obama assault, particularly health care. It was really the cap and trade movement on the Obama, in the Obama administration that first ignited the Tea Party movement. Then the health care assault re reignited even more. Uh, I'm proud of the Tea Party activists out there, the individuals that made up that movement. The movement and the Tea Party movement isn't one, eclect one group. It's an eclectic group of Americans who care about their liberty. So I'm not ashamed to be associated with those folks and in fact I expect and hope to have every one of them working for me in this election. We're going to take a commercial break. We have a lot of folks that have planned, uh, have written in uh, some questions for you that they want to know where you stand on specific issues and I want to give enough time to get into each of those issues. So we're going to take a break here and we'll be back with some of the questions that you have submitted right after this. Music inspires, but passion makes us the best. Passion led us to build Shore Medical Center's state-of-the-art surgical pavilion and earn Plain Tree designation for the best patient-centered care. It's a passion we share with our exceptional physicians, our affiliates at Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey and Penn, and as a member of the Jefferson Neuroscience Network. Most of all, it's a passion for the people we care for. Shore Medical Center, New Jersey's only Plain Tree designated patient-centered hospital. Atlantic City International Airport, fly ACY. Atlantic County's recycling program benefits our environment, but recycling in Atlantic County also generates savings for our towns. Recycling reduces the need for landfilling, it saves energy and resources. One way to keep Atlantic County green is to make recycling our number one goal. Recycling has been law here for 25 years, so whether it's at home, school, or work, the ACOA can help you set up your recycling program. Let's keep Atlantic County beautiful. Call the ACOA today. Now more than ever, voters want to know if candidates really have South Jersey's best interest at heart. Beginning July 7th, NBC40 brings you an 18-week series, Conversations with the Candidates, featuring one-on-one -on -one interviews with New Jersey's U.S. and state Senate candidates, Assembly and gubernatorial candidates. Conversations with the Candidates air Sundays at 8.30 a.m. and Tuesdays at 7 p.m. To submit your question for the candidates, go to NBC40.net. Welcome back to our conversations with the candidate. Steve Lonigan is our guest. He is one of those individuals who's running for the U.S. Senate seat on the Republican side, and we welcome him this half hour to talk about now in this segment some of the questions that you, as our viewers, have submitted. Mayor Lonigan, what is your stance, Suzanne Jay from Ocean City wants to know, on marriage equality? Uh, I happen to believe that marriage is the cultural cornerstone of our society. It's an institution that has proven over thousands of years and across civilizations to be the best institution for raising a child. To me, marriage is a sacrament in the Catholic Church and supersedes any government policy. While I respect the right of individuals to have the lives the way they so choose, and I would not cast moral judgment on them or intervene, I will preserve marriage as the institution it should be, and that is an institution that's best designed to raise children. So you don't have a, a, a concern that the way the system is set up right now that it's being discriminatory, discriminatory towards those of, of same-sex relationships? No, I don't consider that discrimination at all. I mean, marriage is an, a, a sacred institution uh, of a man and a woman, and it has a certain role in our society. If people want to have other lifestyles, that's their decision. I would not encroach upon their lifestyle, but neither should they encroach, encroach upon my religious beliefs and our religious freedom to hold the marriage in the esteem in which it should be held. 
Our next question comes from Alex B. of Hamilton, and Alex writes, given our current economic situation, if you're elected to the U.S. Senate, what would your priorities be when it comes to spending cuts? Cut the size of government, cut spending across the board, cut with uh, as deep and hard as possible. Let's look at, for example, the new trillion-dollar farm bill trillion dollar bill of which 740 billion dollars is for food stamps we've seen a massive expansion of the welfare state we have a government national debt of now exceeding 17 trillion dollars and growing and there's no end in sight unless we put an end to it we're going to destroy the american economy and we're going to destroy the value of our american currency are we beyond the point of no return when it comes to our economic situation right now well you're never beyond the point of no return because even after the collapse of rome there was still trade and people still had to feed their families and have business is and, and build you know an economy so there's always an economy but is it going to be a free and open economy or is it going to be a black market economy or is it going to be a suppressed economy I'm for a free and open economy with lots of free trade and lots of economic growth that can cannot possibly happen under a government of uh, uh, oppressive regulations high corporate taxes personal taxes property taxes uh, and a questionable rule of law by the way so we have a long way to go in putting New America back on track but it is absolutely doable a lot of people running for office, when they are running, say, I, I want to cut taxes, I want to cut government. But then they get to Washington, and, and you're only one person of, of 50 people, and at this point, uh, you're in the party who's not in the executive office right now. What do you do as one individual and a freshman in the Senate to, to rally others around you to see your point of view that's a great question Jeff and you're right you're one of a hundred voices however I will point out that as a mayor of a town in New Jersey I did cut spending I did outsource services I did uh, you know I have a budget that was less 12 years later than the day I walked into office that's unheard of um, I cut the size of government yet I still improve services and the property value of the people of my town so I understand how government operates I understand government budgets I understand where they hide the money and while I am only one voice I'm going to be a very loud and articulate voice for New Jersey taxpayers I will not vote for spending increases I will not vote for more national debt we have too much spending in this country way too much debt and we need to put ourselves back on track we need to go back to the values and the principles of you know what we call the greatest generation the people who built this nation that's one of frugality and learning how to save money although it was during that greatest generation that we saw a, a um, an administration in Washington balloon government and start down a road where we are now. Yeah, you're talking about the Great Society after Franklin Roosevelt and of course the explosion of welfare spending and debt and that is a huge issue and one of my potential opponents in this race, Cory Booker, is actually proposing to take spending, welfare spending and entitlement programs to a whole new level um, because he wants to bring those same welfare programs that have done so much damage in the city of Newark to the rest of the country. So this goes back to where we started. This is a very clear difference between my candidates and the Democrats candidacy. Let me get practical here because I've, I've heard of people that have been on public assistance before and, and known people who've said, I'm in a catch-22 situation. If I don't make a certain amount of money, I can get government funding. If I go out and get a part-time job and try to get back on my feet, then all of a sudden the government cuts me off and I'm not making enough to make a living and therefore I'm in this situation where I'm trapped where if, if I stay where I am right now, yes, I'll never achieve a, a, a level that's any higher, but the, the risk is too much to get off of government, uh, get off the government dole now because it, it's, it's become a system where it's not a hand up, it ends up being a lifestyle that you get trapped in. The welfare system in this country is a vicious circle. It's, it's a vicious trap. It is a lifestyle in which people are trapped in generation after generation. Uh, and we're not helping people. We're not helping society with this. Yet uh, the Obama administration and all of his allies want to make it even worse. Uh, they want to build a society in which each American is relying on government from the day they're born to the day they die. They die in every step in between. Um, it's tough to get tough on people. It's tough to get people to go out to work. You had uh, wel workfare programs, where they turned welfare to workfare under the uh, Gingrich uh, years. We backed off on those issues. Uh, it's just this general humanitarian feeling that we have to be helping people. But we're not helping people when we trap them into welfare. But you know that people do say, we want you to cut programs, just don't cut my program. Yeah, well, New Jersey, by the way, happens to be one of two states in the nation that gives uh, welfare payments to able-bodied young adults without kids. So we are really a model in New Jersey for what not to do. 
Let's go into our next question. Uh, this comes from Michaela in Acre Harbor Township. What is your take on patient protection and the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare? <laughs> well, this is a big issue in this campaign, probably the most important issue. It is the most uh, vicious intrusion into our personal lives by the federal government in if not ever, a very long time in which the government bureaucrats now play a role in our health care decisions and health care mandates. Now, one of the key components of the Affordable Care Act, a.k.a. Obamacare, is the employer mandate, which was going to require employers with more than 50 employees to have to provide Obama-mandated health insurance. That was to kick in on October 1st of this year. But recognizing the destructive impact this would have on our economy, the Obama administration, President Obama, unilaterally um, postponed this until after the elections of 2014. Now, he postponed this because this would have had a major impact on New Jersey and on this election, my special election, October 16th. Um, it was a political move. And it brings the, begs the question, where does the president get the unilateral authority to postpone a law passed by Congress? He doesn't even have the right to do that. Now, it should be stopped, but not just temporarily. It should be ended permanently, as should be the entire Obamacare bill. Well, and interesting, because as of the taping of this interview right now, uh, the Republicans in mass on Capitol Hill in the Senate sent a letter today to President Obama saying you stop the one side of this with the employer mandate let's put a halt totally to Obamacare. Well, well they have to because on January 1st now the individual mandate kicks in which requires every American have Obamacare or pay a fine to the IRS or have a taxpayer subsidized a plan that's going to cost a fortune. So now you no longer have employers being forced to pay this. How are they going to force individuals? So I will predict that they will forestall or stall the uh, individual mandate as well. What John Boehner and the Republicans in Congress and even the minority Republicans in the Senate need to do is advance a bill to end the employer mandate permanently and defund Obamacare. I, I asked this of Dr. Eck when she was with us during the last interview. I said a lot of people with all due respect to politicians say uh, when I go to office I'm going to do this I'm going to do that you hear administration after administration get up in State of Union address and they say uh, before Congress I've got this one plan if you can give me something that's better I'll listen to you whether that's political rhetoric or whether that's an actual plea for for some kind of plan uh, I leave that to the viewers but what would you say to those who say show me a better plan mayor I would say let's implement and expand health care savings accounts so that especially young people can begin to accumulate cash in a tax-free account for their older years to take care of their own health needs, deregulate health insurance, allow health insurance to be bought across state lines, uh, encourage, as uh, Dr. X plan is, not to, doctors who give pro bono services should be covered, not be subject to malpractice. We should have uh, a malpractice reform of trial lawyers and malpractice claims, then we need to create more free market solutions to health care issues. You know, this is the most advanced nation in the world. We have the greatest health care system in the world. I don't care what people say about Cuba or Europe. We're the best. Uh, and we're going to thwart that if we don't turn this Obamacare thing around. Our next question comes from Renee S. in Galloway. Where do you stand on the issue of gun control? Do you think there's appropriate measures already in place? Or are you in favor of increasing controls? I am a member of the NRA. I do not own a gun, but I believe in the constitutional right of every American, law-abiding American, to defend their rights, their, their families, their properties, and their freedom against assault by others. Uh, I do uh, support, you know, keeping hands out of the guns, the guns out of the hands of criminals first and foremost. Um, and I support the NRA, support of the in Insta check, background checks, that's fine. Uh, but ultimately, I do not want to watch our Second Amendment rights dismantled. Um, and I believe this administration does. And, I, and all four of the Democrat candidates are on the exact opposite of me. They want to disarm America uh, and, and take away our right to defend ourselves. Where do you come down on assault weapons? On, well, I support the NRA's position. There are, there are a lot of um, military assault weapons that even NRA members believe are, do not belong in public, but then there are many guns that look like assault weapons. And just because they look like an assault weapon, because of the way uh, a stock is shaped, then the government says, well, this is an assault weapon. And they, it's just a, an example of how the government overextends its boundaries in regulations. Now, there's this issue, by the way, Jeff, and I'm going to get into this because it's controversial about limiting magazines to like nine shots or eight shots. But here's the problem. If you're in your house at night and you have your gun with your nine shots and a couple of guys want to break in and they're loaded to the teeth and they want to kill you, 
They don't want to hear about how, well, you're going to have to stop and reload your gun. Right? If you're out in the middle of the woods, or you're out somewhere away from where police can get there to protect you, and you're under assault by a home invasion, you don't have time to stop and reload your gun because the government says you can't protect yourselves. Meanwhile, the criminal's armed with maybe four or five handguns and a rifle. Elizabeth W. from Ake Harbor Township writes, do you feel that the NSA surveillance overreaching is, is overreaching by the government? The NSA went out and collected millions of phone, millions, maybe more, tens, hundreds of millions of phone records, emails, and of course, first they say they didn't do it, then you learn they did do it. Now, they claim they need to do this to protect us from terrorists, but this is the same administration whose strategists bragged about, hey, they, they could, through uh, analysis and computer algorithms or, or whatever, drill down to groups in Facebook as small as 30 for their Facebook ads for their campaign. They could actually find people in America down to groups as small as 30 that shared common interests. But they can't figure out that my 85-year-old mother is not a terrorist and they need to collect our phone bills. I have a big problem with that. Should Edward Snowden be given asylum in another country or should he be brought back here to face the government? I think Edward Snowden is a whistleblower, not a traitor. Um, I don't understand his contractual obligations as a contractor to the U.S. and what that means as a whistleblower. Um, I don't know, and, and that to me is a civil issue. So should America be dragging Americans back over civil issues? I'm not an expert in that field. Um, I think if I were Edward Snowden, I would come back to this country, I would stand up, stand on what I believe in, uh, and, and take take a chance on it. And I think most Americans would agree that maybe he gets slapped down for violating his contract with the country, but I don't believe he's a traitor. We'll be back with more right after this. Stay with us. Music inspires, but passion makes us the best. Passion led us to build Shore Medical Center's state-of-the-art surgical pavilion and earn plain tree designation for the best patient-centered care. It's a passion we share with our exceptional physicians, our affiliates at Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey and Penn, and as a member of the Jefferson Neuroscience Network. Most of all, it's a passion for the people we care for. Shore Medical Center, New Jersey's only plain tree designated patient-centered hospital. There's an adventure waiting for you on the Cape May Lewis Ferry. Ride the trails to Cape Henlopen State Park. Take the shuttle to Historic Lewis. Shop at the Tanger Outlets or dine at Dogfish Head Restaurant. Whether you're crossing the Delaware Bay for a fun day trip or part of a long distance vacation, the Cape May Lewis Ferry makes getting there a breeze. New for 2013, comfy recliners, early departures, and a delicious grill. Take the Cape May Lewis yeah. Ferry this summer. Your destination awaits you. So when I realized that I had made the bed over 10,000 times, that's when I had my mattress moment. We have been sleeping on the same one for ever. So we went to the Mattress Gallery at Raymore and Flanagan. They have the biggest selection you've ever seen. Find the largest selection of mattresses in the Northeast at the guaranteed lowest prices. Guaranteed. Free next day delivery set up an old mattress removal. Make Raymore and Flanagan your mattress destination. NBC NBC 40 All throughout South Jersey Our viewers know when they want local coverage, we're the place to go. You don't live in Philly, and neither do we. NBC, NBC 40. Wherever you watch us, news, weather, and sports, the station where local comes first. Welcome back to our conversations with the candidates. Mayor Steve Lonigan is our guest. He is the Republican uh, candidate running for the uh, U.S. Senate. He is running in the primary. And in our remaining moments that we have, what should the people in South Jersey know about you when they go to the polls uh, that sh would convince them that you are the man that should be in Washington. Well, that's going to be the clear difference between me and whomever the Democrat nominee is, because they're all going to stand for the same thing. Much of the theory, uh, the theme of this campaign, as we've discussed, has been government overreach, and that's manifested itself in the IRS, abuse of power, the NSA, and the DOJ going after the privacy of reporters. And, you know, we've seen this in the much discussed Obama health care bill as it reaches into the private lives of Americans. But there's other areas as well, Jeff, particularly, and I think the biggest political prize 
is the government's takeover of the education of our children of what's now referred to as common core education standards whereby the federal government is taking charge of our children's education which should be very sacred to us education is supposed to be about parents and children and teachers not about federal bureaucrats determining what our kids are going to learn this is a very disturbing trend in this country away from that individual liberty of teaching our own kids uh, towards having the federal government grab control of that but it's again it's another power grab by the federal government so after you have the obama health care takeover you have the takeover of education now you have something called dodd frank very complex but deeply disturbing invasion into the entire financial industry where the government will monitor and control every one of your financial transactions unless it's in a brown paper bag in a back alley. But you know, given red light cameras and surveillance cameras, you might not even have that privacy any longer. Um, so Dodd-Frank is a real threat to our future financial security and stability. And then, of course, you have the Federal Reserve Bank, uh, which will be printing cash nonstop, has been printing cash nonstop to support the government's spending habit, which is out of control. That is resulting in debasing America's, America's currency and the value of those who have spent their lives saving money. You know, we all talk about having a million dollars. When I was a kid, having a million dollars means a lot. That's an iconic number. Um, but today, the average American who's worked all their lives and saved a million dollars can expect to get a return in the bank of about 12000 a year. Not even enough to keep up with inflation. That's because of the failed monetary policy of this administration. And by the way, as a U.S. Senator, most, one of my important votes will be in January of whether or not to renominate Ben Bernanke as head of the Federal Reserve Bank. And that answer will be no. Uh, I've had enough of the failed monetary policy of this government and what it's doing to our American dollar. So again, the whole core of this campaign is about the role of government in our lives and how much bigger we're going to allow it to get. I believe the whole country is going to watch this race, and this is going to be a referendum not just on Barack Obama's policies, but on the future of our constitutional rights and our rights as individual Americans. Mayor Lonigan, thank you very much for joining us this half hour. We wish you the best in the primary coming up. Thank you, Jeff. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with some final thoughts right after this. Stay with us. Music inspires, but passion makes us the best. Passion led us to build Shore Medical Center's state-of-the-art surgical pavilion and earn Plain Tree designation for the best patient-centered care. It's a passion we share with our exceptional physicians, our affiliates at Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey and Penn, and as a member of the Jefferson Neuroscience Network. Most of all, it's a passion for the people we care for. Shore Medical Center, New Jersey's only Plain Tree designated patient centered hospital. I'm 24 years old, and when I first joined the credit union, I had no credit. Between the loans and the advice they've given me, I've built a good foundation and raised my score from a 400 to a 700. I was even able to buy my first car. The credit union gives the little guy a chance when some of the big banks don't have time for people just starting off. Not only is my credit strong, I also have a strong relationship with my credit union, one that I can trust in. Like Ricky, many are struggling. Visit bankingyoucantrust.com for help. Credit unions, banking you can trust. Having our own surgery center gives us lots of advantages because it's only ophthalmology. We have the newest technology lasers and the newest technology cataract removal equipment available. The patients are met by people who take care of eye patients all the time. That's the great thing about Horizon Eye Care. First and foremost, convenience for our patients and control over our operating room. There's nothing like an ambulatory surgery center that's dedicated to only one specialty. That's all we do here so we can offer our patients the best eye care possible. Spend your day with South Jersey's number one news station. Wake up with NBC 40 News today in South Jersey, weekday mornings from 5 to 7 a.m. And then come home to NBC 40's number one evening newscast from 5 to 6.30. And then wind your way down with the 11 o'clock news and sports. All with the local weather forecast just for South Jersey. NBC 40, we are South Jersey's number one newscast. That's all the time we have for this edition of Conversation with the Candidates. If you would like to submit a question for future guests running for office, you can visit our website at NBC40.net. Look for the Conversation with the Candidates logo on the right side of the home page. There you will be able to submit your question. You may hear it in a future edition of our forum. Again, visit NBC40.net to submit your question. Our guest today has been Mayor Steve Lonigan. Mr. Lonigan is running in the New Jersey Republican primary for U.S. Senate. I'm Jeff Whitaker, inviting you to join us next time for another edition 
of Conversations with the Candidates.